Hi my YouTubers, this is Carmen Scheid or 1C Scheid and I want to thank you for joining me and we're going to get started on a new tutorial. I haven't done one in a while. I've been busy. My husband's a truck driver and so I've been going with him. I just finished a painting. It's a painting of angels. I really like angels. And I'm just going to show you kind of what I've been up to. So I painted Archangel Michael, Gabriel, then I have Raphael, and then I have Uriel. And hopefully you can see my painting. It's a pretty large canvas. It's a 40 by 30, so it's pretty big. And I decided to do the four archangels with Tobias. And it, I really like angels. And so I wanted to have that. And I've included the colors that they're associated with. That's why you see that ray behind them. So... And I'll show you later on a, a close-up. So we're going to get started on this new painting. And what I'm hoping to do with this new painting is I'm going to download the videos as I'm going for you guys. And then I'll create a fast speed paint. And I'm going to show you everything I know, how I do my things. Everybody paints differently. And so I'm going to show you how I paint I hope you're able to learn something or take something from it. I'll let you know that um, as old as my channel is, is when I started painting. I have no, I haven't gone to school for painting. Um, I've been fortunate now to see some artists paint, but the things that I've seen in paint, uh, it's almost like when you paint, you instinctively know how to do things. So I do like to watch other paint, painters paint because um, you tend to learn or pick up things from them. And so uh, other than that, I have no training whatsoever uh, when it comes to art. But um, I used to want to paint everything the way. I, I like realism and I like impressionism. And uh, well, some of my favorite artists are Van Gogh. Um, I have all kinds of mix in there. I like Muka. I like um, Degas. Uh, the, all the ones in uh, the Impressionist movement. And uh, so far, as far as current painters, I like Jeremy Lip Lipkin and Greg Gerhardt's, I want to say. Or Jeremy Gerhardt's. I kind of get them confused, but I, I like the way they paint. Uh, Johnny Lily Doll, if you're wanting to start, Johnny Lily Doll has great painting. She kind of does paint by almost like a paint by numbers where you put the light and you put your half tone. Half tone is the medium tone and then the dark tone and then she blends it in. If you're wanting to learn to paint, uh, she's great. Uh, you can find her DVDs on Amazon, her website. They usually sell anywhere between $60 to $80 or more. Um, or if someone puts them on YouTube, then you can go ahead and watch them. Um, my husband was nice enough to buy me one of her videos, and I really liked it. But I tend to like to paint the way Gerhardt and Lipkin, Lipkin paint, where Greg Gerhardt's, yeah, where you dab. I call it dab, putting, like they, they say, a tile at a time. That's how I like to paint, and sometimes I blend. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started and let you know. I go and I do, I don't have life models, so what I do is I, I go through Pinterest. I go through, um, who is it? Flickr. But Pinterest has awesome pictures. So if you guys want some references, go ahead and go through um, um, Pinterest. And see, I was using some of pictures, people dressed in Renaissance for my paintings. And I, I print them out. I used to print them out at, um, see, I have all, all kinds of references. And 
I go from there. I used to print them out at Walgreens, but Walgreens would give me a hard time sometimes. So now I just print them out of my printer. I take the picture and I print it under super fine and high gloss. I actually buy photo papers on eBay or Amazon. I get a hundred of them. And you have to change your setting to super fine and high gloss paint um, paper so that way you get the quality of a photograph and I started doing that because plus it's cheaper than going to places anyway so I'm going to go ahead and get started a new painting and um, I really like to meditate and the painting I want to do is of a woman and the woman is in nature and uh, so I'm going to do some trees on the back um, hopefully get some inspiration from Muka. If you have a chance, look up Alphonse Muka. He does beautiful paintings. Um, they're, he's no longer alive, but he has beautiful work. And so I went ahead and I saw this on Pinterest. And it's going to have some of this in the background. I printed it out. And uh, I was looking at crowns. Because it's going to be nature. So I was... I'm going to get some inspiration. This one's done with regular paper. Uh, the paper dulls it out. The gloss gives it a richer color. But I was just wanting the reference for the uh, crown. And then I happened to find this beautiful um, picture of this girl. And I was lucky to find two girls wearing the same. It looks like a modeling show, a runway show. So they're both wearing the same gown, like a see-through gown. And so I'm gonna do her. I was contemplating between doing her and her, and I'm just gonna go ahead and use her. And, cause I, I would love to see her in nature with this beautiful gown. And I'm gonna, sh she's gonna be wearing like a crown. And uh, it's not gonna be like a golden crown. It's gonna have flowers and crystals in it. and give the um, give you the suggestion of the chakras the energy centers and so it's going to be violet indigo uh, blue green yellow orange and red so I'm going to try to put that on there so I have my references and I have her too they're wearing the same gown so I, I really like that and I found this one too with crowns and flat with a crown and flowers I was actually wanting to paint her but I decided to go with this one so what I'm going to do is first of all let me show you I have my brushes I'm going to use whatever brushes I used to be like really picky of just wanting uh, some soft brushes but I use bristle I use soft, I use square tips, I use round tips. So just use whatever. You don't have to buy the expensive brushes because after a while your brushes will start getting fussy. See, mine are, the hairs are starting to go all over the place. So use whatever brushes you want. Of course, bigger to cover bigger areas. But I am notorious for using a small brush for covering small areas. So. I have round and flat, so um, I clean them with turp, um, I'll, I'll show you what I clean them with. I clean them with Dawn and uh, a soap, a little soap, and um, I also use, uh, to clean my brushes, I use a Masterpiece Paint Thinner Odorless. It just seems like every time I go to buy the the paint thinner, the the price jumps by three dollars every time. It never fails. Same thing with the paints. The paints that I'm using are Winsor Newton. They're oil paints, Winsor Newton, and I even use uh, uh what are they called? Georgian, Georgian. That's usually what I go by. Yeah. Georgian paints, whatever's on sale. I actually go through the sale rack and I buy my paints. I used to be like just Winston Newton, but everything's just going up ridiculously. And I've noticed too that they've changed the way they make some of the paints. I've bought some sap green. I use a lot of sap green. 
Um, and it's Winston Newton, and they changed, I don't know, the formula. It just seemed different. I buy cheap napkins, a big pack, like for $2. That's what I use to wipe my brushes as I'm rinsing my brush, cleaning my brush. Every time you load up your brush with a new paint, you need to wipe that brush and clean it. And I'll show you when I'm, as I'm going on it, about it. I have this little canister where I keep my uh, paint thinner. And I use linseed oil to thin out my paint. I used to use turpentine, which is the paint thinner. But turpentine, what it does, it removes paint. So uh, I don't know what some of my first paint. Well, I have seen some of my first paintings that I use turpentine to thin the paint. The paint's practically gone. It's really, the paint's disappearing. So what I've decided to do, and the reason I have this Winsor Newton is because it was on sale, like for $15 linseed oil, but I buy different kinds. Whatever is on sale is the linseed oil I will get. And what I do is, for example, if I have a little can um, container of linseed oil, like this, I pour it into another container so I'll put this in there and I'll fill this up with turpentine my masterpiece paint thinner and I'll pour it in there and mix them and that's how I get my one part one part paint thinner to paint to thin out my paint so the more paint thinner you put like your linseed oil I just call it linseed oil your, the more linseed oil you put into your paint because some of them are peg really thick the more water watery it'll get and you can do great water color effect with oils and um, what I use is I have this master master sun comes with a lid and I painted this gray I got a, it's called a value five, a gray, and um, I painted it gray, and I put it here, and I have my pixie glass, and I just put it in here, this is where I keep my paints, I lay them out, and when I'm done painting, and what I do, and I have my paints in there, and it's going to be the next day when I'm going to paint, I seal it. Some painters put water in it to keep the paint moist. I've never done it, but some do. I just go ahead and seal this and then unseal it for the next day. So I just keep this in here. Let's see what else did I want to go on. Oh yes, um, I use this. It's a little blade that you can get. You can buy blades and then you clean your palette for the next day. You clean it, get rid of the paint for the following day. So that way you start with new paint or a clean area. Sometimes though I leave it there overnight. Um, and what I do once I'm done, and sometimes it's really hard to take off that paint when you're sitting there scraping. I've discovered this thing called Crude Cutter. And it's a tough task remover, and apparently it's a non-toxic biodegradable thing. I got it at Walmart. I can't find it anymore. I might have to go to a car part where they sell car things. Anyway, so it says that painters use this to clean their brushes and remove paint. It does remove paint really good. Uh, I used it on some of my brushes, and it kind of dried them. So I wouldn't suggest using it. If you want to, it's up to you. You're going to wear out your brushes, but it's great for cleaning your palette. And be careful because I just cut myself. As you can see, I was going to start painting today for you guys. And I took a good chunk off while I was cleaning this to remove the paint. Took a good size, like the size of a dime skin. It hit my bone really bad. So please always close your knife. I've been painting for like eight years and this is the first time I ever get cut. So please be very, very careful. Now, when I have my linseed oil, 
and I've combined it and I don't want to keep it in that big jar I put it in here and it seals and I dab my paintbrush as I'm going and I put it with my palette and I keep them together so what I've done is I've sketched my picture and I use just a regular pencil sometimes I use charcoal pencil sometimes I just sketch it directly with a paintbrush um, I used a pencil to sketch her and I'm using and it sense the same thing with the canvases every time I buy a canvas it goes up in price um, I'm using a Joe's Prime really good canvas. It's a 24 by 30 inch. Usually I do a, um, a wash. And uh, I'm going to do a wash later on. And I'll show you. It's called toning the canvas. Usually I tone the canvas uh, with a wash. But what I did is I went ahead and I just sketched it. Now, you, if you've seen some of my paintings, you've seen that I do sketch. I know how to sketch. Um, but as some of you guys may know, some of you guys may not know, I only see out of one eye. Uh, both my eyes work, but I only see one at a time. So while this eye is seeing, the other eye doesn't look. So I never see with both eyes at the same time. So what happens a lot of times is if you ever cover one eye and you're looking at an object, it looks like it's in one position and if you cover the other eye it looked like the object moved so what would happen with me is after I would be done sketching and I'm like looking and I'm you know trying to sketch and the face is this way and this and it's like uh, half of this to measure sometimes because I'm only seeing out of one eye it would look to me like I was doing the object wrong or I was placing my object wrong and I would have to start all over again and when I would do it it was right and that would really um, waste a lot of my time and it's really frustrating so one of the viewers his name was Bob and he said um, that I could use a projector why not use a projector and once he told me that, that's what I use. I use a projector. I know how to sketch. I know how to draw. And sometimes I just draw on my own, you know. But if I'm trying to do uh, somebody, a portrait of somebody, the best thing for me to do is I use a projector. And I'm really glad that he suggested that for me. So you guys can do that. Um, you can use a projector or you can use a grid line where you do squares back and forth and then your picture that you're copying or wherever your subject matter is you do the squares and you just fill the square the section of the square according a lot of you guys are familiar with the grips you do them in elementary school it's basically the same thing I'm glad I found this projector I bought myself a projector for like $50 on eBay and that's what I use you have to do it at night though I when I sketch either the, the I do it at night I bought myself a, um, I'm going to bring it up for you guys. It is an AG100, and it's an art, artograph. And you put your reference material in here, and you set it up on a, I'll send you guys like a link. I'll put. Uh, I used a Stellar Labs um, stand. That's where I have my. I'm putting it back down. Okay. A Stellar Labs stand, and that's where I place um, my my artograph, my projector. To sketch and so what I do is I place it here you can I'll send you guys the, the link and you can level your your little stand and it holds the projector I bought it for $56 I was really lucky yeah, look online uh, I'll include a link to that too if you want to and I went ahead and I sketched her and that's what I did so the best thing to do is when you're using it to sketch it 
with um, uh, against white white background. Know that if your canvas tilts back, the projector is going to make her bigger because the way it's projecting. So you have to bring the canvas forward straight to keep a straight. Um, you know, uh, to keep her straight and she's not wide at the top and small in the bottom. I, I do this usually, um, sometimes I'll, I'll paint myself as I'm going. I start doing the figure as I'm going and I start putting in the eyes and doing this. Um, but, or sometimes I draw and sometimes I use the art to graph. I'm so glad that Bob recommended that for me. He's really helped me save a lot of my time. And I'm happy about that. Like, for my angels, when I did my painting of my angels, um, it just basically helps you get the basic shapes down. You're not going to be able to get everything perfectly. So let me move out of the way. So you're not going to be able to get everything perfectly. So when I was painting my angels, I wasn't able to get him perfect. You just get the basic shapes on there and it really helps. Um, so I suggest if you want to get an artograph, so I'm going to put this out here. Um, what we're going to do, so you know the basics as to what I'm going to go ahead and do. And I already have her sketched. And um, let's move this over. He was the one that I basically had to draw on my own because it, it was a statue, and statues don't look like they're real people. Her too. Okay, let's come over here. So, what we're going to do is I have my basic shapes. I have her. Let's see if you can see her. Let's do the how good. Let, let's come over here. This is what she looks like. I went ahead and changed the hair. I put a crown on her. I have the face, the hands, and the bottom. Then I will add the background. So I wanted to paint for you guys. I really did, and I was really excited. And but I cut myself really bad. I'm still bleeding. I had to get temporary stitches on there. I basically chopped my whole knuckle, a good size of my knuckle. I chopped it with the corner of the uh, blade. So please be very careful. So my next video is going to be is we're going to sketch her and I'm going to show you how to do that.